Uh, my name is Dr. Salihu Ismaila. This is uh, a 200 level course, QOS 201, Nigerian Government and Politics. It is uh, a course that carries two credit units. Uh, the course is aimed at introducing the nature and character of Nigerian government and politics. This is very important because I want to assure you that it's going to be an interesting course. I'm bringing to bear on the course my experience over the years in the service. I've served for uh, 35 meritorious years and retired in government. So I can authoritatively tell you that yes, the course is going, going to be interesting and I will uh, bring it to bear my experience in government as we go along. Uh, like in any other uh, course, uh, this course will start with the clarification of uh, the historical background of Nigerian politics, including the colonial antecedent. My, it is my belief that for you, for students to properly understand the, uh, the genesis, uh, the character of the Nigerian government and politics, it is important that we go into the historical antecedent of Nigeria. It's important because you cannot just, you have to, that is a foundation. It gives us, it helps to build a foundation for the course. You just don't just start uh, discussing uh, Nigerian politics, Nigerian government and politics from the blues. No, we must, I want us to go to the foundation. And uh, we will uh, do that by facing, uh, we are dividing Nigeria into phases as we go along. Colonial, pre-colonial, colo uh, colonial and post-colonial. The course will also introduce the Nigerian constitution because it is the document that guides the operations of government. The, it is the uh, document that uh, is like the, the, the Bible, so to say, and Quran. Of, of the Nigerian government and politics. As individuals, as groups, as government, we are all expected to acquaint ourselves with the uh, provisions of the Nigerian constitution because it serves as a guide, everyday guide to day-to-day -day, uh, uh, affairs of government. It's, it's, it's uh, controlled by the provisions of the constitution. Uh, the course, like I said, the course will uh, analyze the impact of colonialism, because Nigeria uh, came under British uh, colonial rule, uh, got its independence in uh, October 1960. And so uh, the impact of this colonial uh, administration has been so great, so immense, that we cannot di discuss adequately and properly the Nigerian government and politics without really referring to colonialism and its impact on uh, Nigeria. So, because it has helped the colonial, colonial history, colonial era has helped to shape the character of the Nigerian government and politics. So, in the course of the, this, our discussion, in order to properly understand the genesis, the nature and character of the Nigerian politics and government, there are some uh, important issues that will be uh, analyzed, that will be discussed. Issues such as census, revenue allocation, elections, the educational system, representation at all levels of government. That is what gives out to uh, the federal character, establishment of the federal character commission, and uh, the impact of this various uh, 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 phenomenon, like revenue, census, on the national unity and integration. It's very important because Nigeria is a diverse country. So whatever we are discussing has to be centered around 
they need to create that oneness, that unity and integration as a Nigerian nation. We also will discuss some primordial issues like uh, ethnicity, religion, uh, sectionalism, uh, and uh, to a large extent, corruption also. How this uh, have helped, has helped to uh, affect the Nigerian government and politics. This is our concern. At the end of the course, as students, we are expected to discuss the nature and understand properly the historical background of the Nigerian government and politics. It is very important. Uh, a student from a political side will be confronted. It's every day this thing. Even outside, even in the bus, even in the, in the motor park, you, are discussed, you hear people discussing the Nigerian government and issues of the day. You are now well informed. It is expected that after this course, you will be well, well informed, well groomed to discuss intelligently about Nigerian government and politics using the, the basic concept, using the, uh, 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 the materials that we've, uh, you've, you've, you've read. You also be, be able to discuss intelligently the impact of colonialism on the Nigerian government and politics and properly understand the uh, issues of revenue, censors, representation, elections, and how these have impacted on the issue of national unity and integration. And uh, also, uh, closely, the progress of the country, whether these various issues have helped to move Nigeria forward or not. Uh, the recommended textbooks, you have an uh, Institute of uh, Governance and Social Research. Uh, that the institute is uh, headed by Professor Elaigu, uh, Ghana Political Science and Government. Elaigu also topical issues in Nigerian political development and Motula reflections on Nigerian politics. There are some other textbooks, many t textbooks, but these are key textbooks that, uh, that you can easily uh, lay your hands on in the library or in the bookshops. Yes. So these are general information about method of assessment, grading style policy. Uh, rules, general rules, general rules also. Yes. So, we are now going to study session one, introduction to Nigerian government and politics. I want to in start by introducing the, uh, the topic. And uh, the introduction will be based on forces that have, that shaped and continue to shape the Nigerian government and politics, especially the historical factors. Like I said earlier, these historical factors are divided into phases. Uh, phase one, pre-colonial. Phase two, colonial. And phase three, post-colonial. By the time you put the three together, I want to believe that adequately you are equipped. Intelligently, you can discuss Nigerian government and politics. Pre-colonial descent uh, period. You see, there are so many scholars, so many writings that Nigeria, before the coming of the British colonial masters, did not have uh, an organized administrative and political system. No, this has since been debunked by research by many scholars and many uh, writers have debunked this in, that before, before uh, the coming of the British, the various uh, communities, nationalities that made up Nigeria today uh, have been having organized political and administrative system. In the north, you have empires. You have Sokoto Caliphate. You have uh, uh, kingdoms in Zaria, Katina, and others. These are well-established political systems with rules and regulations. In the north, the Sharia, the, after the establishment of the Caliphate, you discover that the, the, the whole north is divided into emirates. Each emirate is headed by an Amir. An Amir is head of this and he's helped by his uh, lieutenant. 
you have uh, title holders like waziri like uh, magajingari like uh, maji like uh, yari the head of the prisons all these are members of his um, the emir council that helped him in the day to day running of the affairs the emir has had all the powers the executive the legislature the executive they are all vested in him he has he had emir had absolute control although is regulated by the principles of the sharia law so it that goes to show that yes in nigeria before the coming of the colonial rule in the north the north had a very strong and well organized administrative and political system equally in the south southwest for example you have Bini kingdom you have ife kingdom you have oyo empire these are empires that these are kingdoms that are well organized with their rulers the obas and their lieutenants that are concerned with the day-to-day -day running of the empires they are, and uh, the, um, they, they relate with each other both the the kingdoms the oyo the bini the ife they all relate with each other especially through trading in the east also you have the Igbo society so you have writers who allege that uh, the Igbo society is a state, state, stateless society but you see they are egalitarian they are based on a linear system if you are familiar with the settlement in the eastern part of the country that is their own system so that to show that yes in the both north south and west before the coming of the colonial masters they have a strong administrative and political system and they relate with each other through the trade trading activities uh, so it is uh, erroneous that's why i say so it is erroneous to assume that there were no formal and organized political system in africa before the advent of the colonial masters yes so you can see the uh, so what caliphate in the north you see the this civil see the over the south yes So, the question here is, there were no organized political and administrative system in the pro-colonial Nigeria discuss. Thank you very much.